My name is Lisa LaRoche. I'm an astrologer and I'm from London. I'm Mike Berry, a computer recruitment consultant from Bristol. My name is Kath Turner, a production support officer from Macclesfield. I'm Bob Smith. I'm a chartered surveyor from Birmingham. Good evening. It's great to be back for the 13th year of television's toughest quiz. The search for the United Kingdom superperson is as demanding as ever. And the first thing I have to do is to congratulate all 36 contestants who qualified from the 11,000 people who originally applied. And this magnificent and most coveted of trophies is what they'll be doing battle for. That'll be presented to the outright winner at November's grand final, but not before the four finalists have enjoyed the experience of their lives. This is the American Space Shuttle. We'll take those finalists to NASA in California, where they'll try to fly it from space to a safe Earth touchdown using the most sophisticated aircraft simulator in the world. But that's the grand final, the climax to the next 13 weeks. Right now, it's time to get the series underway by wishing our first four brave contestants, Lisa LaRoche, Mike Berry, Kath Turner and Bob Smith, the very best of luck. And headphones on, please, now, contestants, to help maximum concentration. And here we go now with round one, mental agility. And tonight's speed test features time intervals of various kinds. I will give each contestant enough information for him or her to give me the time, date or day I'm seeking. For example, if I said one hour, 20 minutes before midday, the correct reply would be 10.40. Or if I said 11 days before July the 1st, then the answer would be June the 20th. This is a speed test, so each contestant must tackle as many questions as they can in 40 seconds. We're going to begin with you, Lisa, and your 40 seconds start now. How many days between Monday and Thursday? Two. Four days before Tuesday? Friday. One hour, 40 minutes before midnight? 10.20. Seven months after October? May. Three days before April the 2nd? March the 30th. A quarter of an hour after 12.50? 105. 12 days before Friday? Sunday. One week before March the 3rd? February the 24th. Wrong. Nine months before May? No need to answer January. that. It, it would have been <laughs> August, but in fact, in 40 seconds, marvellous start for you. You've got seven. Well done. And we move along now to Mike. And your 40 seconds, Mike, start now. Three days before Sunday? Thursday. Two hours, ten minutes before midday? 9.50. How many days between Saturday and Wednesday? Three. Four days before June the 3rd? May the 31st. Wrong. Five months after September? January. Wrong. Three quarters of an hour after 2.55? 3.40. One week before August the 2nd? July the 26th. Nine days before Monday. Saturday. You just missed that. The music started before you were right, but too late, I'm afraid. But in 40 seconds, a good start for you. You've got five right. Well done, Mike. And let's move down now to Kath. And your 40 seconds start now. How many days between Tuesday and the following Monday? Five. Five days before Monday? Wednesday. One hour, 20 minutes before 10 o'clock? 8.40. Six months after November? May. Six days before May the 4th? April the 29th. Wrong. Three quarters of an hour after 10.35? 11.10. Wrong. One week before February the 5th? January the 
Well, the answer was the 29th, but not to worry. Uh, in 40 seconds, you scored four. Well done, Kath. And finally, it's the turn of Bob. Your 40 seconds start now. Four days before Thursday. Sunday. How many days between Sunday and the following Thursday? Three. Two hours 50 before four o'clock. One ten. Four days before August the 2nd. July 29. Ten months after September. July. A quarter of an hour after 3.55. 4.10. Eleven months before February. March. One week before December the 3rd. November 26th. Twelve days before Friday. No need to answer that. The answer would have been Sunday, but fantastic start for you, Bob. In 40 seconds, you've got eight rights. Well done. Well, what a tough baptism that first round is, but some excellent performances there. And with the usual 10.64 and 2 for first, second, third and fourth place, let's look at the scoreboard. And there in fourth place, Kath, third Mike, second Lisa. But the early leader with a Krypton factor of 10, the chartered surveyor from Hall Green, Birmingham, Bob Smith. <laughs> The world's only supersonic passenger jet, Concorde, touching down in majestic style. And tonight we challenge our contestants to land Concorde by taking the controls in the eight million pound flight simulator at British Aerospace Bristol in an exacting and nerve-wracking coordination test. British Airways Concorde training captain, Jeremy Rendell, will judge the landing attempts. The approach is into Kennedy Airport, New York, and first to go is Lisa LaRoche. Flying fairly steadily as she follows the commands of the attitude director indicator. In whichever direction those yellow bars move, she must turn the control column in her hands the same way. And the runway is straight ahead, so the direction's good, but she is in danger of overshooting, desperately dropping the nose to get down. But the onboard computer warning her the dive is too steep. Captain Rendell a bit worried about it. And now she's pulling back too hard on the control column and she's beginning to climb heading up towards the stars well she is an astrologer and indeed she has missed it and her flight is aborted hard luck next it's mike berry rocking about a bit but his approach so far has been fairly accurate the runway is directly ahead but he's not losing height quickly enough so what can he do about it he needs to drop the nose. That's the end of the runway. We should really be seeing the beginning of it. Now, if he can pull back on the stick now, he might just get it down on the end of the runway and onto the grass, pull back, and he doesn't do it, and that, I'm afraid, is a crash. What a pity he'd been doing so well. Now, Kath Turner, can she do any better? The contestants don't have to worry about engine power or flaps. They just have to keep straight and descend at the right angle. But Kath's in trouble with both those elements, too far to the right and much too low. The automatic warning system telling her to gain height quickly. But she is way off course and in a fairly hopeless position. Just trying to get left towards the runway. Now she's starting to climb, so there's no way she can get out of this. And I'm afraid Kath Turner's flight is about to be abandoned. Hard luck. Finally, it's Birmingham's Bob Smith. It's been a very erratic approach, and if you watch his hands there, he's wrestling with that control column when really he should just be nudging it. But somehow he's got in line with the runway, approaching it at 185 miles an hour, and pushing that nose down, in fact, pushing it down much too far. So it looks like a disaster he can't bear to watch there in the studio, and straight into the runway javelin style tough luck so with nobody landing successfully captain rendell judged it on the best approaches in fourth place after a zigzag performance and crash bob smith third kath turner who lost the airport second lisa laroche whose approach was good until she unfortunately started to climb right at the end and the winner mike berry who flew the most accurate glide slope until disaster now the points from those placings go into the scoreboard and we've got a new leader with a Krypton factor of 14. It's Bristol's Mike Berry.
Round four, round three, a brand new observation challenge. Gone is spotting the differences between take one and take two. In its place, the even more exacting task of spotting six deliberate mistakes that occur during just the one showing of a specially shot sketch. There could be changes to costumes, props or information like places, names and dates. For example, a picture on the wall might disappear halfway through the sketch. A bow tie might suddenly become a cravat and a location referred to as London at the start might become Bristol by the end. So note very carefully what our performers say, wear and use. But in tonight's sketch, you can forget the fast changes of location. That's all part of the fun, as we're joined by special guests Annika Rice and Kenneth Kendall, getting this new style observation round off to a flying start. Contestants, turn to your screens, please. Maximum concentration, absolutely vital now as we join the Krypton Factor treasure hunt. Quite a stitch now. Do you know where you are, Annika? No. I've lost my clue, Kenneth. The cameraman, David, says I must have dropped it somewhere. Oh, Annika. Never mind, I'll give it to you again. On a street where ships might be, enter a building with masts. Take 50 paces west to find the answers just beyond our ken. Oh, well, we think a street where ships might be is Harbour Lane, Annie. Is that any help? Yes, here it is. I found it. Yeah. Nice. Thanks a lot. Pay you back. Oi! Ah! Oh, sorry about that. You'll have to get a move on, Annie. Yeah, yeah, Kenneth. Hang on a second. Two pounds fifty. Any news? Five pounds. Come on, Annika. Ten pounds each. Time's running out. No problem, Kenneth. I say, lads, thank you very much indeed for all your help. See ya. Hey! Hey! The building with masks we think is a TV studio, Annie. There they are. Oh, great. Can't miss out on those. You'll have to hurry. Sorry, Kenneth, there's been a bit of a hold-up. Oi! Hey! Oh, gosh. Oh, Annie. On a street where ships might be, enter a building with masts. Take 60 paces west to find the answers just beyond our ken. 60 paces west? Which way's west, Eric? Come on. Come on! I'm so sorry. I really am so, so, so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Oh, oh gosh. well done, Annie! Fantastic. Now, will you tell me where you put the helicopter? Oh, would you like to know? That's the lot. Contestants, turn to the front, please. And will you now write down what you think the six deliberate errors were? And while they do that, our thanks to Annika and Kenneth for their splendid efforts there. And we shall now show you, out of sight and earshot of the contestants, just what the six changes were. First, the cameraman's name. The cameraman, David, says I must have dropped it somewhere. But David later became Derek. Which way's west, Derek? Next, notice the design on the hamburger girl's jacket. Later, it changed to a plain grey one. Number three was the countdown clock. It jumped back from 58 seconds to 1 minute 6 seconds. Change number four, the oranges, which in the checkout queue became lemons. The clue itself contained the fifth mistake. Take 50 paces west. But later it was no longer 50 paces. Take 60 paces west. And finally, Annika's headset. It had disappeared when she entered the studio at the end of the sketch. Well, I wonder if you found that harder than the old take one, take two test. I certainly did. But of course the important thing is, how did the contestants make out? And I have their answer cards right here. Mike, you got three right. And Bob, you also got three right. So both of you share third place. And Lisa, you got four rights, and Kath, also four rights. So we have joint winners of that round in Lisa and Kath. We shall enter those points into the scoreboard now. And look at that, we have a brand new leader with a Krypton factor of 22, the astrologer from London, Lisa LaRoche.
Round four takes us out to the Krypton Factor Assault Course. 20 obstacles packed closely together down 450 yards of Lancashire moorland. Designed to test stamina, agility, courage and determination. It's a course that demands respect but needs to be attacked right from the start. And Major Tony Carr of the Army Physical Training Corps starts the race. Lisa LaRoche in red nearest to us, Kath Turner on the far side. Kath Turner, quite an athlete, runs for Macclesfield Harriers up in Cheshire. And in the Macclesfield Marathon, she was the fastest woman. And that's nicely over the rope swing, going very well indeed right at the start. Now the men underway, Mike Berry from Bristol nearest to us and Bob Smith from Birmingham on the far side. Both keen soccer players play in their local soccer leagues. And look at that for aggression. I talked about attacking the course and Mike Berry doing just that. Now all our contestants will have spent the last five weeks following a rigid training schedule set for them by the Army Physical Training Corps, preparing them for this course. They've also spent a day with the Army learning the best techniques to employ for these obstacles. And there you can see just what I'm talking about when they land, their feet are together, their knees are together, exactly as they're told by the army. Good example there from Kath Turner. So in the lead at the moment, it is Mike Berry. He's gone ahead of Kath Turner. And you'll notice the technique when he climbs this scramble net. Select one strand of rope, climb either side of it, and lean back as you go towards the top. This is Bob Smith in third place. But Mike Berry and Kath Turner there, pretty close together. Kath's a real fighter, so she'll not let him get too far in front. Bob Smith trying, though, to get up into second place himself. So, going towards the first of the water jumps now, Mike Berry. And he bounces in and bounces up and has to power up that inverted V. So there's plenty of strength left there. He's running a very good race indeed, Mike Berry. And this is Kath, and that's a cold dip for her in the second water jump. Lees her back in fourth place and won't improve on that, I wouldn't think. But Mike Berry coming down now, the aerial slide, with the landing to think about. And immediately he'll be pulling up those knees, up go the feet, and that's a perfect splashdown. And look at the battle going on behind him for second place. And on the far side, Bob Smith just goes half a stride ahead as Mike Berry has the finishing line in his sights. And now down the aerial slide, who's going to get second place? No doubt about who's going to get first place. Mike Berry, it's been a brilliant run. He now takes the tape and the ten points in a very fast time. But splashing down together, Kath and Bob, and it is Kath who gets her hands out of those safety loops quicker and on her way to the last obstacle with Lisa way back in fourth place. But under the flat net, this is the last obstacle, and it's Kath burrowing her way under there. This is splendid technique, and she's holding off Bob Smith. Just a couple of strides to go now to the finishing line, and Kath comes across the line to take second place and six points. Congratulated by the winner, Mike Berry, and that leaves Bob Smith to come through in third place. Great sportsmanship there by all our contestants as we update the scoreboard with those points. And Lisa drops down into second place and back in front with a Krypton Factor now of 28 is the recruitment consultant from Bristol, Mike Berry. So very close indeed as we move into the penultimate round and one that always sends a shiver down the spines of our contestants. It's the three-dimensional logic puzzle. And tonight's test celebrates the 200th anniversary of the French Revolution. From that array of irregular shaped pieces, the contestants' task is to build the main fortifications of the Bastille, and the test finishes when the tricolor flies from the centre of the building. Are you all ready, contestants? The test starts now. Well, first let me emphasise that the contestants did not enjoy the benefit of seeing the completed version of the Bastille as you just did. So really, their first step should be to study all the pieces and look for the clues and logical steps. Looking down the line, I think they've all picked up the right start, which is to place the corners in position. And as there are eight corner sections, they should quickly realise that this is a two-tier construction. Bob's certainly onto that. Now, the next clue is the black doorway, which should be in the middle, obviously at ground level, and facing us. Now, Mike's got a problem, in fact, with the door. He's missed out the top part of it, so his construction is inaccurate and he won't be able to finish it. Kath Turner in third place overall, doing well. And there you see how the door should look with that pointed top to it. Bob, I think, in a bit of trouble at the moment. 
looking despairingly at his remaining pieces, but this looks good. Lisa, very close to finishing that, I think, is the last section. Just needs the flag to go on now. There it is, and Lisa wins the round and gets ten points. Very well done. Now, Mike Berry, he sorted out the problem with the door, and it looks like it might be second place for him. Everything's slotting into position perfectly now. There's the flag, and second place for him. Six points he takes, and seems happy enough about that. Now, who's going to be third, Bob or Kath? Well, Bob here is a chartered surveyor, so if he came last, he might suffer a bit of leg pulling in the office. But, in fact, he makes it into third place. Bob Smith from Birmingham, and he gets four points. Well, a storming performance on the Bastille there by Lisa. Congratulations to her. That'll put her very much back in the race now, and we'll check it on the scoreboard. And indeed, we have two contestants sharing the lead. With Krypton Factors of 34, London's Lisa LaRoche, and still there, Bristol's Mike Berry. So a very tight battle going on here as we enter the sixth and final round. Don't forget the winner of tonight's first heat will go through to the Group A final in three weeks' time and the runner-up has a chance of being there too if his or her score is high enough. Coming up, 100 seconds of rapid-fire general knowledge questions to be answered on the buzzer. Two points for the correct answer but two points deducted for a wrong answer. Stand by, contestants. The clock starts now. Before 1954, what name was used for what are now the Commonwealth Games? The answer is the Empire Games. Too late. The Empire State is the nickname of which of the USA's 50 states? Bob. New York. Correct. Who plays New York policeman John McClane in Die Hard and David Addison in Moonlighting? Mike. Bruce Willis. Correct. In which sport were Helen Wills Moody and Dorothy Rand? Bob. Lawn tennis. Correct. Which composer wrote parts for three tenors, Cassio, Rodrigo and Otello, in his 1887 opera based on Shakespeare? Answer is Verdi. Which Queen says, sentence first, verdict afterwards in Alice in Wonderland at the net Bob? Queen of Hearts. Correct. Two of the Hearts' four chambers are atria. What are the other two called? Bob? Ventricles. Correct. Which ventriloquist has a dummy called Lord Charles? Bob? Ray Allen. Correct. Who defeated Alan Beath in July 1988 to become leader of the Social and Liberal Democrats? Bob? Paddy Ashton. Correct. In which of the arts was Sir Frederick Ashton famous? Bob. Conductor. No, ballet. What name is used for a basket below a balloon or airship as well as for a boat in Venice? Bob. Gondola. Correct. In which country are the regions of Gonda, Walo, Tigre and Eritrea? The answer is too late, I'm afraid. I've already started Ethiopia. Which religious group regards the former Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie as div Bob? Rastafarians. Correct. Which author created the character Raskolnikov in his novel Crime and Punishment and wrote the brothers Mike? Dostoevsky. Correct. Which movement did that... <laughs> and that's it, the end of the round, but not the contest, because two contestants, Mike and Bob, are level on 38, which means a sudden death playoff. I will read the next question. The first one to buzz will answer. If he gets it right, he wins the contest. If he gets it wrong, then two points are deducted in the normal way and the other person wins. So, stand by, Mike and Bob. Here comes the question. Which movement began after a camp in Dorset in 1907 on Brancy Island in Poole Harbour? Mike. Boy Scouts. Is correct. And that means that the winner of tonight's contest with a Krypton factor of 40, the recruitment consultant from Bristol, Mike Berry. <laughs> Fantastic finish and a great way to start the series. Our warmest congratulations, of course, to Mike on that splendid victory. We look forward to seeing him again in our Group A final. And with a very good runner-up score of 38, well, Bob might well be joining him there too. In the meantime, from all our contestants here this evening and from me, good night. Well, we pick up exactly where we left off next as Gordon welcomes four more contestants into the arena of IQ. More Krypton Factor after the break.